the King's Mill massacre took place on 5 January 1976 near the village of King's Mill in South County Armagh, Northern Ireland. Gunmen stopped a minibus carrying 11 Protestant workmen, lined them up alongside it and shot them. Only one victim survived, despite having been shot 18 times. A group calling itself the South Armagh Republican Action Force claimed responsibility. It said the shooting was retaliation for a string of attacks on Catholic civilians in the area by loyalists, particularly the killing of six Catholics the night before. The King's Mill massacre was the climax of a string of tit-for-tat killings in the area during the mid-1970s, and was one of the deadliest mass shootings of the Troubles. A 2011 report by the Historical Inquiries team found that members of the Provisional IRA carried out the attack, despite the organization being on ceasefire. It has been claimed that the IRA members acted without the sanction of the IRA Army Council. The HIT report said that the men were targeted because they were Protestants and that, although it was a response to the night before, it had been planned in advance. The weapons used were linked to 110 other attacks. Following the massacre, the British government declared County Armagh to be a special emergency area, and hundreds of extra troops and police were deployed in the area. It also announced that the special air service was being moved into South Armagh. This was the first time that Shash presence in Northern Ireland was officially acknowledged. Background on 10 February 1975, the Provisional IRA and British government entered into a truce and restarted negotiations. The IRA agreed to halt attacks on the British security forces, and the security forces mostly ended its raids and searches. However, there were dissenters on both sides. Some Provisionals wanted no part of the truce while British commanders resented being told to stop their operations against the IRA just when, they claimed, they had the provisionals on the run. The security forces boosted their intelligence offensive during the truce and thoroughly infiltrated the IRA. There was a rise in sectarian killings during the truce which officially lasted until February 1976. Loyalists, fearing they were about to be forsaken by the British government and forced into a united Ireland, increased their attacks on Irish Catholics. Nationalists, loyalists killed 120 Catholics in 1975, the vast majority civilians. They hoped to force the IRA to retaliate and thus end the truce. Some IRA units concentrated on tackling the loyalists. The fall-off of regular operations had caused unruliness within the IRA and some members, with or without permission from higher up, engaged in tit-for-tat killings. Irish National Liberation Army members, and current or former members of the official IRA, were also involved. Between the beginning of the truce and the King's Mill massacre, loyalist paramilitaries killed 35 Catholic civilians in County Armagh or on its borders. In that same period, Republican paramilitaries killed 16 Protestant civilians and 17 members of the security forces in the same area. Many of the Loyalist attacks have been linked to the Glennon Gang, a secret alliance of Loyalist militants. British soldiers from the Ulster Defence Regiment, and police officers from the Royal Ulster Constabulary. A former member of the group said they wanted to provoke a civil war, believing that when civil war erupted they could then crush the other side. On 31 July, loyalists shot five members of an Irish pop band at Buskill, killing three. Like the King's Mill Massacre, the band's minibus had been stopped at a fake military checkpoint by gunmen in British Army uniform. Loyalists carried out two similar attacks over the following month. On 1 September, gunmen burst into Tully Val and Orange Hall and shot dead five Protestant civilians, all members of the Orange Order. The attack was claimed by a group calling itself the South Armour Republican Action Force. This was the first time the name had been used. 
On 19 December, two Catholic civilians were killed and 20 injured when loyalists detonated a car bomb outside a pub in Dundalk, a few miles across the Irish border. Hours later, they killed three more Catholic civilians and injured six in a gun and bomb attack on a pub in Silverbridge. An RUC officer later admitted involvement and detectives believed other RUC officers and a UDR soldier were also involved. On 31 December, three Protestant civilians were killed in a bomb attack on a pub in Guildford. The People's Republican Army claimed responsibility. It is believed this was a cover name used by members of the INLA. Four days later, on 4 January 1976, loyalists shot dead six Catholic civilians in two coordinated attacks. They killed three members of the Reavy family at their home in White Cross and three members of the O'Dowd family at their home in Ballydugan. The Irish News reported that the killings were revenge for the bombing in Guildford. RUC officer Billy McCoy admitted taking part and accused another officer of being involved. His colleague, John Weir, said that two police officers and a British soldier were involved. The Het report found that while the King's Mill massacre was in direct response to the Reavy and O'Dowd killings, the attack was planned before that. Following the earlier Loyalist attacks, Republicans had apparently decided to dramatically retaliate if Loyalists struck again. The report said the murderous attacks on the Reavy and O'Dowd families were simply the catalyst for the premeditated and calculated slaughter of these innocent and defenseless men. The attack on 5 January 1976, just after 5.30 p.m., a Red Ford Transit minibus was carrying 16 textile workers home from their workplace in Glenan. Five were Catholics and 11 were Protestants. Four of the Catholics got out at White Cross and the bus continued along the rural road to Bestbrick. As the bus cleared the rise of a hill, it was stopped by a man in combat uniform standing on the road and flashing a torch. The workers assumed they were being stopped and searched by the British Army. As the bus stopped, 11 gunmen in combat uniform and with blackened faces emerged from the hedges. A man, with a pronounced English accent, began talking. He ordered the workers to get out of the bus and to line up facing it with their hands on the roof. He then asked, who is the Catholic? The only Catholic was Richard Hughes. His workmates, now fearing that the gunmen were loyalists who had come to kill him, tried to stop him from identifying himself. However, when Hughes stepped forward the gunman told him to get down the road and don't look back. The lead gunman then said, right, and the others immediately opened fire on the workers. The 11 men were shot at very close range with automatic rifles, which included armor lights, an M1 carbine and an M1 Garand. A total of 136 rounds were fired in less than a minute. The men were shot at waist height and fell to the ground. Some fell on top of each other, either dead or wounded. When the initial burst of gunfire stopped, the gunmen reloaded their weapons. The order was given to finish them off, and another burst of gunfire was fired into the heaped bodies of the workmen. One of the gunmen also walked amongst the dying men and shot them each in the head with a pistol as they lay on the ground. Ten of them died at the scene. John Bryans, Robert Chambers, Reginald Chapman, Walter Chapman, Robert Freeburn, Joseph Lemon, John McComville, James McQuirter, Robert Walker and Kenneth Wharton. Alan Black was the only one who survived. He had been shot 18 times and one of the bullets had grazed his head. He said, I didn't even flinch because I knew if I moved there would be another one. After carrying out the shooting, the gunman calmly walked away. Shortly after, a man and his wife came upon the scene of the killings and began praying beside the victims. They found the badly wounded Alan Black lying in a ditch. When an ambulance arrived, Black was taken to hospital in Newry, where he was operated on and survived. The Catholic worker, Richard Hughes, had managed to stop a car and was driven to Bestbrick RUC station, where he raised the alarm. One of the first police officers on the scene was Billy McCoy, who had taken part in the Reavy killings. 
He said, when we arrived it was utter carnage. Men were lying two or three together. Blood was flowing, mixed with water from the rain. Some of the Reavy family also came upon the scene of the King's Mill massacre while driving to hospital to collect the bodies of their relatives. Johnston Chapman, the uncle of victims Reginald and Walter Chapman, said the dead workmen were just lying there like dogs, blood everywhere. At least two of the victims were so badly mutilated by gunfire that immediate relatives were prevented from identifying them. One relative said the hospital mortuary was like a butcher's shop with bodies lying on the floor like slabs of meat. Nine of the dead were from the village of Bessbrick, while the bus driver, Robert Walker, was from Mount Norris. Four of the men were members of the Orange Order and two were former members of the security forces. Kenneth Wharton was a former Ulster Defence Regiment soldier while Joseph Lemon was a former Ulster Special Constabulary Officer. The Perpetrators the next day, a caller claimed responsibility for the attack on behalf of the South Armagh Republican Action Force. He said that it was retaliation for the Revio Dowd killings the night before, and that there would be no further action on our part if loyalists stopped their attacks. He added that the group had no connection with the IRA. The IRA denied responsibility for the killings at the time. It stated on 17 January 1976, the Irish Republican Army has never initiated sectarian killings, and sectarianism of any kind is abhorrent to the Republican movement. If the loyalist elements responsible for over 300 sectarian assassinations in the past four years stop such killing now, then the question of retaliation from whatever source will not arise. However, a 2011 report by the Historical Inquiries team concluded that provisional IRA members were responsible and that the South Armagh Republican Action Force was merely a cover name. It added, there is some intelligence that the provisional IRA unit responsible was not well disposed towards central coordination but there is no excuse in that. These dreadful murders were carried out by the provisional IRA and none other. Responding to the report, Sinn Féin spokesman Mitchell McLaughlin said that he did not dispute the sectarian nature of the killings but continued to believe the denials by the IRA that they were involved. SDLPU Assemblyman Dominic Bradley called on Sinn Féin to publicly accept that the HETS forensic evidence on the firearms use puts provisional responsibility beyond question and to stop denying that the provisional IRA was in the business of organizing sectarian killings on a large scale. According to journalist Toby Hardeen, the British military intelligence assessment was that the attack was carried out by local IRA members who were acting outside of the normal IRA command structure. According to Hardeen, RUC files suggest that 14 IRA members, including future real IRA leader Michael McEvitt, had met on New Year's Eve to plan the attack. Hardeen quotes an alleged South Armagh IRA member, Volunteer M, who said that IRA members were ordered by their leaders to carry out the King's Mill massacre. Hardeen also quotes Sean O'Callaghan, an IRA member who worked for the security forces as a double agent. O'Callaghan claims that IRA chief of staff, Shames Twomey, authorized the attack after Brian Keenan argued it was the only way to prevent more Catholics being killed. However, O'Callaghan says the two men did not consult the IRA Army Council about the attack. Rory O'Bradi claims that he and Twomey only learned of the King's Mill attack after it had happened. Two R-18 rifles used in the shooting were found by the British Army in 1990 near Cully Hanna and forensically tested. It was reported that the rifles were linked to 17 killings in South Armagh from 1974 to 1990. Further ballistic studies found that guns used in the attack were linked to 37 killings, 22 attempted killings. 19 non-fatal shootings and 11 finds of spent cartridges between 1974 and 1989. 
In 2012, a secret royal military police document shown to the Sunday World newspaper revealed that the gunman who finished off the dying men could have been arrested five months later. The document says that the man was wounded when British soldiers engaged an IRA unit near the Mountain House Inn in South Armagh on 25 June 1976. He managed to flee over the border and was treated at Louth County Hospital but the other three IRA members were captured within hours. According to the RMP document, two of them named P as the fourth member. Two of the guns captured had been used in the King's Mill massacre. The RMP document reveals that the security forces knew P was being treated at the hospital but made no attempt to have him arrested and extradited. This has led to suspicions that P, who has never been prosecuted despite extensive paramilitary involvement, was a British agent. Alan Black, the only survivor of King's Mill, believes that IRA members involved in the massacre were double agents working for the British state. He believes there was a cover-up, and that British security forces knew the massacre was going to happen but allowed it to. Karen Armstrong, brother of victim John McComville, said, A lot of people were being protected back then and they were still a. It has been suggested that the gunman with the English accent could have been British intelligence officer Robert Nerick. John Weir, a former IUC officer and member of the Glennon Gang, claims he discovered that British intelligence, through Nerick, was playing Republican and Loyalist paramilitaries off against each other. Ian Paisley's claims immediately after the King's Mill attack. Some members of the security forces began a campaign of harassment against the Reevey family, and accused Eugene Reevey of organizing the massacre. His three brothers had been shot by loyalists the day before. Eugene and some of his family happened upon the scene of the King's Mill massacre while driving to hospital to collect his brothers' bodies. The bodies of the murdered workmen were being brought into the mortuary when he arrived. He went into the room where the shattered families were gathering, and wept with them. In 1999, Democratic Unionist Party leader Ian Paisley stated in the House of Commons that Eugene Reevey was a well-known Republican, and had set up the King's Mills massacre. Paisley made the claims under parliamentary privilege, which meant he could not be prosecuted for his remarks. He claimed to be quoting from a police dossier, but it is believed to have been an Ulster Defence Regiment intelligence file. Paisley's claims were flatly rejected by Reevey and by the only survivor of the massacre, Alan Black. Susan McKay wrote in the Irish Times that, on hearing Paisley's accusations, Black went straight to the Reevey's house and told Reevey that he knew he was innocent. The then Northern Ireland Deputy First Minister, the SDLP's Seamus Mallon, expressed outrage at Paisley's claims. Ronnie Flanagan, Chief Constable of the RUC, said there was no evidence whatsoever to connect Reevey with the massacre and that no police file contained any such allegation. In January 2007, the police's historical inquiries team apologized to the Reevey family for security forces allegations that Reevey had been involved in the King's Mill attack. Despite this, the allegation continued to be promoted by local unionist activist Willie Fraser of families acting for innocent relatives. In May 2010, the Het released a report which exonerated the three Reevey brothers and their family of any links to paramilitarism, leading Eugene Reevey to demand an apology from Paisley for his comments. Paisley died in 2014 without withdrawing his allegations.